Hello, my name is Tony Steffi. I'm the sales engineer at EdgeWave. And today I'm going to give you a demonstration of the iPRISM Internet Content Filtering Appliance. The iPRISM is an all-in-one appliance that's designed to give you internet content filtering, application control for things like Skype, FTP, IM, and peer-to-peer, -peer, and reporting all-in-one appliance. Before we get started with the demo, I'd like to give you an overview of how the iPRISM works. So at this point, I've logged into the iPRISM interface. Quick tour around the interface. In the upper left-hand corner, we'll see the user account that I used to authenticate into the iPRISM. If you're in an organization where you're delegating out administration, typically via your Active Directory or other network credentials, you'll see exactly what account you've used to authenticate here. If you have multiple iPRISMs in your organization, you'll see the specific model that you're logging into right here. In the center of the screen, then, you'll find your main navigation buttons. The three here on the left, these are your day-to-day -day type activities with the iPRISM. Three here on the right, these are more of your one-time or setup type activities with the iPRISM. Now, getting an iPRISM up and talking on the network, it's a very straightforward process, very similar to setting up a workstation or a server, in that you give the iPRISM a fully qualified host name, P address for the network it's sitting on, appropriate default route and DNS information. It's so maybe a little bit different than setting up a typical workstation or server. Notice here we have three interfaces. The internal interface, this is the interface that's typically connected to your network switch or your core router. The external interface, this is the interface that's typically connected to your firewall, your upstream router. And then there is a third interface here. This is an out-of-band network management interface. So if you have a separate subnet that you use for managing your infrastructure, switches, hubs, routers, things like that, the iPRISM will play well in that type of environment. The next thing we'll look at here is under network services. This is where we can define a number of additional things for communicating on your network. If you're doing management via SNMP, the iPRISM can communicate within your SNMP community. If you're using WCCP, the iPRISM does support WCCP version 1 and version 2. If you require the use of an SMTP relay for sending mail outside of your organization, the iPRISM can use that here. The iPRISM will use email notifications for the purposes of alerting an administrator, sending out scheduled reports, and doing any type of alerting or request for access. Down here under system preferences, here we can define a number of additional things. We can change the iPRISM password, change the time as needed. But the really key things here, the iGuard updates and the system updates. Now iGuard updates, this is referring to the iGuard URL database updates. You can change the time that the iPRISM is going to check for those updates. So if you have a backup window or an auto window that you need the iPRISM to work around, you can call that out. We also have an Update Now button. So if you uh, have a new iPRISM that you're installing or you had an internet outage, just want to make sure you've got the latest and greatest, you can use that Update Now button. Over here under System Updates, now System Updates, this is referring to things like operating system upgrades, hotfixes, other types of updates. The nice thing about the iPRISM being a dedicated appliance is that you don't have to do a lot of patch management with the iPRISM. There's no Patch Tuesday in the world of the iPRISM. If there's something that's out there that's new and available for the iPRISM, it will have gone through our internal QA group. We're going to know it's good code for the iPRISM, and at that point, it will be made available. By default, those updates happen automatically. iPRISM will check in on a nightly basis. If there's an upgrade available, it will download and apply it. Or in organizations where you want to do your upgrades during a normal maintenance window, what you can do is tell the iPRISM to check for an update. If it's available, it will send an email to the administrator, and then you can do your update during your normal maintenance window. The next step to setting up an iPRISM is here under Directory Services. This is where we tell the iPRISM how to do authentication on your network. The iPRISM will use your existing network infrastructure for the purposes of authentication, either into the UI for identifying individual users on your network. And the iPRISM will authenticate with the, just about anything you'll find out there these days. We'll authenticate against Active Directory 2000, 2003, or 2008. The nice thing about the way the iPRISM does this authentication, it doesn't require any software on your domain controllers. We simply join your Active Directory as a machine account, and then we use that machine account to authenticate users as they go out to the Internet. If you're in a Novell environment, NDSE directory, we'll do that authentication via an LDAP lookup. Likewise, we'll use LDAP for any Macintosh or Unix environments as well. At this point, you have the iPRISM up and talking on the network. The next step then is to take your organization's internet acceptable usage policy and create the rules to enforce that policy. And that's done by creating and applying profiles. 
Now, in some organizations, one set of rules that applies 24-7 to everybody, that's all that's required, and that's the way the iPRISM ships right out of the box. But if you need to have different sets of rules for different groups of users, you can do that by creating and applying profiles. 